How's it going, everyone? Uh, today we're going to test out a Technics uh, compact five disc changer. This is a, an SLPD 647 uh, mash, <laughs> which uh, is supposed to stand for multi stage noise shaping. Uh, this is a 1993, so we're, you know, 20 years old on this one. Um, it has your normal random repeat, you know, you can and uh, search and, you know, and you can set it up to where it'll uh, just pick a song randomly and play it for you. I picked this up at the auction. Uh, a couple, three, four weeks ago, this one, uh, I think I paid like five bucks for this. Uh, I was sitting on top of a, a box with two ugly lamps on it, and, and I took the CD changer and left the two ugly lamps. As a search, you can uh, select any of your discs that are in it. Uh, of course, you're open and close. You got your stop, pause, and play, and you can skip a uh, disc skip, which uh, you can actually, you know, if it's on like one, you can skip a disc and it'll go to two or three, what, whatever it does work. You have your search. I already said that. I'm repeating myself as somebody on my channel has commented that I repeat myself. This is a rotary changing system. So what we're going to do, well, before we get into what we're going to do, um, this one, like I said, made in 1993, uh, 29 years old, so I'm sure we're going to have to probably put belts on it. I mean, most of them, after 10, 15 years, the belts start getting a little funky and stretched out and break and gummy. Brand new. In 93, this was $220. So, you know, it, uh, Techniques in 93 is, um, you know, still a good brand. I mean, it, it's not, uh, they used to be in the 70s and 80s, you know, pretty much top of the line, right up the, right up at the top there. But um, I forget who bought out or bought into Technics. Uh, Panasonic is the parent company of, or was the parent company of Technics. So any of the Panasonic turntables or any of the other stuff is pretty much uh, the same as the Technics. So Panasonic was good in the to in their day too. But right now everything's kind of kind of crap. You know we're kind of in a throwaway society where you buy something and when it breaks or stops working you just throw it in your dumpster and it goes in the landfill and you go buy another one because most of these uh, most of the stuff nowadays you can't get parts for them uh, you can get you know breakdowns of them and all that but try and find parts is almost impossible Especially lasers and uh, you know and and gears and stuff like that for your drives and all that stuff. So it we just throw them away and go buy a new one. Um, on this one, I think we're gonna go ahead and just plug it in and hook it up and and see what it does and see if it works. We're just gonna pretend like uh, we just bought this and we're gonna hook it up and see what a, you know as a customer buying something what you would find in it and see if it works for you I didn't get the remote for it so we'll have to see if we can program a, a universal remote for it so I'll get you set up uh, we'll get this hooked up and see if it works or if we're gonna have to we're still going to tear it down and um, take a look at it at the inside and probably clean up some old grease and re-grease the, the tray and, and some of the other slide stuff. So I'll get you set up and we'll start testing it out. Got her all hooked up. Let me get the stereo set. 
Uh, see if we get any power. Yep. Okay. Let's see if it'll... Let's put this in number one. See if it reads it. Checking the discs. Found disc one has a has a CD in it. And she plays. Okay, I'll run it through its paces and uh, well now let's uh we know it works. It's playing, so uh let's let's tear it down and service it. And see what we got inside. That's Kid Rock. <laughs> uh, and that disc isn't in the greatest of shape either, so. Okay, get her turned off. Uh, let's let's make sure we unplug it. So I, oh, somebody didn't. Yeah, I did turn it off. Okay, let's uh, unplug it so somebody doesn't get zapped and standing over here dancing around. One ten doesn't doesn't hurt. But it it'll scare you. I mean it, that's something that I, I don't like to do. <laughs> we got two two big screws on the, on each side and two little ones on the back to hold our our, our top case on. Should be able to just lift this up and off. There we are. Set that off to the side. Yeah, she. Doesn't look bad inside, that's for sure. And there's our little eye here telling us our disc, that we have a disc in it. Mm. We don't really need to do a whole lot to this. Okay, that comes up. The laser is a little, a little cloudy looking. Let me see if I can get you up in there. You can see the laser. Right, that little hole right in there. That's our laser, and you can see it is a little cloudy. And so what we'll do is I'll just take a, a cotton bud on a steak, on a steak, and a little bit of alcohol, and I'll clean him off. Uh, everything else, I don't know if we really need to get into this one or not. Everything seems to be working pretty, pretty good. And all we really need to do is clean up the laser on it. So let me let me get my cotton bud on a skeek and we'll get in there and clean that up. Okay, I got my cotton buds on a stick here, courtesy of one of my subscribers. He sent me a 325-piece industrial cotton swabs assortment. And I'll tell you what, these things really come in handy. I use the heck out of them. And I did find them elsewhere too. 
And let me see if I can get you right down in there. You can see our little laser eye is right, right there. And we're just going to kind of wipe him up a little bit with some alcohol. And then we'll take our a dry one. And we will just soak up any excess alcohol that's on it. There. That looks better. It's not quite as cloudy as it was. Camera's throwing a fit. Doesn't like that. Okay. And like I said, everything else, uh, I'll take some compressed air and and blow any of the dust bunnies out of it and then we can play it some more and make sure everything's okay so far you know it, I think it's everything's gonna be good so let's oh I'll get you set back up here and let me let me see what you're looking at curious as to what it looks like when you're going to play it. Ah, that's better. Here's our little our square belt. I may go ahead and change that square belt. But I'm gonna have to ew. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut you off here and I gotta nature calls. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna change this belt anyway. Uh, let, let's take it off and yeah, there's not much not much stretch left to that. So let's Let's see, I have a couple of them over here. Uh, this one, they're square. Takes a square belt. Uh, let me I'll put it on the motor first. Now I still have this plugged and turned on. So we can. Hmm. That seems a little better too. Yeah. Okay. Now, most of the time, I have found that you don't need a whole lot of grease on plastic on plastic. I mean, there there is absolutely nothing on this one. There's a little slide mechanism right here, and this pin right down in here. And that's what raises your tray up to meet your CD. And I put some grease in that little slot where it... not going to take much but I I feel better if I have a little bit of a little bit of grease on those gears you know you put it on a couple of spots on those gears and then as the gears turn it'll it'll work itself in and this is the motor that actually spins our desk and it has a a rubber 
rubber ring on it that grabs a hold of the disc and spins it. And sometimes they get some crud on them. And it won't spin the, you know, I haven't had them not spin the disc. But I've had them where it's kind of higher on one side. And it'll make the disc kind of flop a little or kind of be a little bit out of balance. And it'll give you kind of a, a hum or a little vibration. I, I clean them up most of the time if they're if they look bad they look like they're dirty I clean them up this one has kind of a rough spot right here there we go okay I got that cleaned. Now we'll put this in, put a disc in disc one. I'll have to push play and see it checks. There's nothing there. So it'll go to all the way to number one. Hmm, didn't like it. Now, now it doesn't want to play, <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't do anything, so we're going to have to find out what happened. I'm wondering if it ha was having problems to begin with, and it just happened to work the first time, because see, now it, it, it's not going to work at all. It won't even begin to spin the disc, and that usually means that the laser didn't even recognize that there was a disc in it. Uh, and all we did was clean it, which is, you know, your basic. So I think now we're going to have to tear it down. I want to leave that door drawer out, so I'm just going to unplug it while it's on. And what we are going to do is I'd like to remove the uh, and there's this is the back of our laser our drive right here. There's a cover. There's a Phillips screw underneath on that cover. two clips up top here. One there and one ah, right there. And there's the back of our drive. And somehow I'd like to get him out of there. Take a peek at it and see what's going on. We have two screws holding the magnetic.
Usually that's mag a magnet that when the motor comes up it pins the disc to the Transformer's a little warm. Ah, there he is. Come on. Okay, our laser. Seems to, I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right, but could very well be just fine. Now, if I'm not mistaken here, we can... Pull that out. There's two clips back here holding the whole deck in. And I pulled that ribbon cable. Come on, you want to come out of there, you know you do. You want to come out and see the world. And there's our drive. This one, this drive itself has a, doesn't have a worm gear or a rat gear on it. What moves it is this little, this is a magnetic, it's like a magnet. And what it does is it, it pulls itself along that steel track. Like so. And this is nylon on metal, so you won't have to. Um, you won't have to grease it. And I do see... It looks like some grease that was on it. Laser's okay. I may have to clean him up a little bit more. Right at the moment, I'm looking. Would you quit? I'm looking to see if there's an actual adjustment on this laser so we could check it. See that got three screws and we can pull the whole we can pull the plastic off of the out from around it. Let's I do not see an adjustment pot on this one. Let's move 
move him out of the way a little bit. Let's take the deck out of its plastic frame. Three different color springs on it. There we go. Oh, okay. A little rubber anti vibration bushing. And see, now I can see a little roller there. Nothing, nothing on that side of the laser. And there it is. Yes, there is. Let's see, I'm going to zoom you in and I'll see if I can show you on this one. Where are you at? Let me get my camera to focus. There's a slotted screw. See my, my pointer here? <laughs> Come on. Zoom in. Focus up. It is right, right there. And it's a straight screw. And what I'm going to do is our normal, is I'm going to check it. And see what the resistance is across it. And see if we need to adjust it a little bit so it'll intensify the, the laser itself. Let's see if I can. Come on. Uh, I don't really. See if we can do this without taking the laser out of it. Because I would rather just do it while it's in here. There's one. Yeah, 1.62. Ivan. Ivan no good ski. We need to bring that down. This one's not too bad to get on. Let's see if we head it in the right direction. Yes, yes we did. Stay there, spring. So on this one, it's clockwise. Same as before, we want to get we want to 
to get right around three and a half. Point three four. Ooh, come on. Be careful. Went the wrong way. Now, so this one's going to be counter. I'm going to go all the way back past where it was. This one does not seem like it wants to adjust. Okay, you get the idea. I'm going to play with it for a little while and see if I can't get it to see if I can't get it adjusted. All right, it took me a couple attempts, but I, I think I made it happy. And I got it down to like 0.311. She goes. And she's pretty happy right there. Uh, my my CD is pretty scratched up. It, it kind of skips every now and then, but I just wanted to show you kind of the inside as to, you know, what it does. Without the cover, you can see how these disc changers work. There's two two little sensors here. There's two little eyes here and here. And that's what tells the chain the player that there's an actual disc in. You can push one and it'll run over to one and you know and then you play it if you remember oh yeah I have a disc in one. Or if you just press plus that Come on, yeah. If you just press play, it remembers that there was a disc in. But now, if we open the tray, whoop, too far. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll put it in in a second. We'll close it. And now it doesn't know that there's a disc in in, uh, in the number two. You push play. See, it jumps up and looks. There's no disc there. So it runs around. As soon as that disc passes those two eyes, it tells the... 
tells the changer that there's a disk in number two. And now it remembers that there's a disk in number two. If you skip disk, skip disk, and then push play, it goes back to number two. So now all, all, is left, all I have left to do is uh, put our back, back cover back on it and get her cleaned up and let it play and see how it's going to play. I'll let it play through Kid Rock. Like I said, it, it's, it's kind of skipping through the next song, but it'll be good for it. We'll see if it'll play through that scratch disc all the way through. All right, she played all the way through. Uh, that my CD was skipping a little bit, so I went over and buffed it out and took out all the skips. And she's working perfect. So I think we're about ready to button it all back up and clean it up a little bit. Uh, I washed the cover already, so we can get it put on. But if you don't, you know, if you don't know how to clean discs, uh, I have videos on how to clean your your game discs and your CDs. I also have videos on how to how to clean your games. If you need to know how to do that, there's a couple simple ways to do them that you don't have to, if you have a, just a regular buffer, nice cloth buffer, you can buff out discs that get a little scratched and they don't want, and they skip a little bit normally if you, if you can, come on, go in there right. Normally, if you can buff them, buff them out a little bit, they'll they'll stop jumping and skipping. So now we have a nice Technics CD changer. Now I tried uh, program a un programming a universal remote to this, and I could not get get it to work. Uh, I didn't get the remote with it, so we're just going to have to sell it the way it is without the remote. Uh, so what did we do? Well, we put a new belt on it. Uh, we did a little service work to it by cleaning up the. The gears, well, we greased the gears. Well, we took the deck out of it, the laser, and adjusted the laser. Uh, I had that in and out a couple of times till I, I found that where, where the uh, player was really happy with it. And we played it through, and now it's working good. So now it's ready for someone else to enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy these types of videos, because I still have a lot of electronics coming up, uh, and some other stuff. We'll get into some other things. So I'm glad you joined me with this video, 
and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.